transition on land-based oyster culture uh, for the future. I think uh, I think this is, uh, has great potential. Back when the work was done 30 years ago, uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, the social inertia, so we call it, to uh, land-based oyster farm. It's a different concept to anything that's been around uh, so far. And yet, oddly enough, the technology is not mine. The technology belongs to the scientists and people who have, have studied this beastie for over a hundred years. So, okay, you've got the idea of a tank system. Uh, as I mentioned, my tanks were 100,000 litres with uh, for every square meter of surface area you have 15 meters of culture area so if i've if i've got uh, a tank and i have 12 systems like this three fours of 12 each one of those that's 30 square meters times 12 it's 240, is it not? 312 to 36. Now it's 360 meters squared. So at a final density of 100 oysters per square meter, ready for market size, this one tank, this one 100,000 liter tank equals uh, at 100, it's 36 bags of oysters. Or a uh, hundred times that is thirty six thousand which uh, what's a, let's let's call it a dollar a, an Aussie dollar per oyster so that thing can make thirty six thousand dollars in a year which is yeah it's okay so if I extrapolate that out. Okay, I've bought a prawn farm. I've paid, I don't know, defunct prawn farms go from anywhere from 600,000 to maybe two or three million. I've got 40 hectares of water. So, for argument's sake, I'm going to culture one hectare of oysters at uh, my surface area is 30%. Uh, which is, uh, let's call it 34,000 metres squared, you can see the potential here. Okay, uh, same rules apply, water in, water out. So one hectare, I'd go for three hectares. 